Yo, what is up everyone? My name is Ice Grenade and welcome to this tutorial. This is lesson three and I'm going to be showing you how we can trigger the moving platform that we made in lesson two. So here we have a platform, here we have another platform. This one should start spinning and this one will start moving and we've made a little trigger here. So we go up to this, it says press F to make it move. If we turn a controller on, you'll see that it says press X to make it move instead. So it's working with controls. I'm gonna show you all of this in what's to come. So let's go up to it and we're gonna press F on here. Boom, this one starts spinning and it'll do one full rotation and stop. And then this platform will start moving as well. And into the zombies we go. <laughs> There are a lot of different triggers you can use in Radiant and we're just going to go through some of them now. So if you bring up the Entity Browser by pressing B on the keyboard and then we're just going to drag this out here. If we go over to Trigger, you'll see that we have quite a few here and each of them have their own different properties. We're just going to highlight the common ones. So the first common trigger that people will be using is the Trigger Use. So if you see here where it says Use and you drag that into your map, you'll see that it places a box in the grid view here also in the camera view as well so a trigger use is the one where you go up to it and it says press f or press x or whatever controller you have to interact with this object and you're going to be writing in that hint string yourself the hint string is what we call the message on the screen when players go up to it and using a trigger use requires a player action before it's triggered so let's roll back the covers a little bit and just explain what a trigger is. A trigger in simple is a way of actioning anything in game and interacting with objects within the game. And there are loads of different triggers so that you can complete things in different ways. So we have a trigger use here, which will require users to press F or, or press X, or whatever the button is, and whatever controller you have, it will change. But there's also a trigger damage, for instance, that will only make something happen after it's taken a whole load of damage. If we just remove this and then drag in the damage, it will look exactly the same, but you've got to shoot or explode or, or whatever you set it up as. And then when it's taken enough damage, it will then cause an action to whatever you've programmed it for. There is also a trigger radius. And as the name suggests, this is one where it will trigger something when you've stepped inside the radius. Very useful for, for certain things as well. And the other common one that people we're using is the trigger multiple. The trigger multiple is simply one that actions on its own without pressing F. So when you walk into it, it will make something happen similar to the trigger radius in this respect, but the trigger multiple obviously is a different shape and you can set it up with a bit more complexity. But anyway, we're gonna delete all of these and in this tutorial, we will just be covering the trigger use. So here we have a trigger use. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do from here, whenever you're setting up a trigger is press N, go to the entity info and assign it with a unique ID. So here we're gonna give it the target name or the ID of make move so I've just written make move and what that's going to do is we're going to refer to that in the script later on and make it so that when you go up to this you can make it so that the objects move the next thing to explain is triggers are invisible so in radiant you're going to want to design something that players will go up to and know that okay well yeah here's something that we can interact with and there are actually a load of common things that Treyarch use to do this one of the most common ones in for example is there is a power switch here so you could program it so that you have a trigger in front of a power switch and therefore players know they can go up and interact with it or they're more likely to find it and interact with it but you might not wish to use that and keep that just for power. There is also another activator thing here. There is a teleporter control here, so you might wanna use this as a thing for them to interact with. And also you might find that this one is used as well, the trap control box, mainly for traps. But there are a lot of things in the mod tools that you could use to basically show players that, okay, here's somewhere you can press something. The next thing I'll add is, yes, these models are not clipped. So if you do wanna put this in your map, it would be a good idea to clip it. So I'm just going to clip it by deselecting it and dragging something over the top of it and rising it all the way up and pressing T and going to clip and there we go. So we clipped this object and we got the trigger with the target name of make move. So this is all going to be setting up in Radiant today. You're going to want to have followed lesson two to set up the other objects for this tutorial. So the next part of the tutorial, you're going to want to go to Sublime and open up your maps script file. If you don't know how to do this, it was all explained in lesson two. Right, okay, so here we go. We've already got the script moving object, and that's the one we're gonna be adding a trigger onto today. Okay, if we scroll down to the function, and it's right here, we'll see that we've got it waiting until the black screen is passed, aka when you're in the game before anything happens. But we don't need that anymore, because we're gonna make it so that it waits for you to trigger it. So I'm just gonna delete that. The next 
next thing is we've got it here declaring the platform that is great if we go over here we'll see that the platform here is declared with that name and then we have the spinning one and then we have the platform move and the platform end so like any other variable in radiant when you set up a trigger you're going to want to set it up and declare it in the same way that any other object is declared i'm just regrouping these so that we have all the declarations in the same place here so we've got the platform set up and we've also got the spinning one as well set up but now we want to add in the trigger and it's done in the exact same way you want to give it a unique name so i usually give it a suffix of t just so that i know that it's a trigger so we called it make move and we want to put t at the end to know it's a trigger you could also do underscore and write trigger in or whatever's most comfortable for you because you're going to be referring to it in a minute to set it up i'm just going to go with make move t and then we're going to do get n and in this case it's called make move if we just jump back into radiant and you look at this entity this trigger it's called make move this is the target name we want to write in here and then we also need to say okay well we're giving you the target name of that entity so it's like get this entity with that value in that kvp and we need to of course end it with a semicolon after that there are two more little things you're going to want to do with your triggers so a common thing is to set the hint string so that it doesn't show us not available so to do this we're going to type in make move t or whatever you called it and you don't need to put an equals here because we're just going to call a function on this object so we're going to do set hint string and this is what i discussed earlier this is the little message that's going to pop up when you go to this trigger and let's just say press f to make it move and a few of you are probably going to go okay well why have you written f okay yeah you could write f but then if someone's playing with a controller it will still say press f and to make this work with any controller there's actually a little secret thing you can write in here and that will make it work with any device so instead of writing F, you can actually type in AND, AND1, or AMPERSAND, AMPERSAND1. And the game's going to go grab whatever device you're playing with, and it's going to grab that particular key and show it on the screen. So here, in this case, AND, AND1 will show F for keyboard users, or it will show X for the Xbox controller users. Okay, that's all great, but the thing that we'll find now is although it will show our own custom message, there will be a little hand icon on the screen. And if you don't want that hand icon, you can remove it by typing in make move T or whatever you called it. And then you're gonna to wanna to say set cursor hint. You see it filled it in for us. And then you're gonna to wanna to write in a predefined one, which is actually called full caps hint underscore no icon. And there are a few different ones you can use, but in this case, we just want to remove the icon and to do that, we write in that. So don't forget to finish it with a semicolon. Okay, so that's the basic setup for a trigger, but at the moment it's not doing anything. We're not using it to trigger anything and we want it so that the rest of this code only runs when someone's pressed F on that trigger. So we need to write a wait. And to do that, we need to just reference this trigger again. And we're going to reference it here, make move T. We're going to type in a wait till and then we're going to type in trigger because we need to tell it that we're waiting for it to be triggered that's the action so that will always be trigger when you're using it to wait for a trigger to do something and then we're going to specify player okay so now when the code runs this function it's going to assign all of these variables and it's going to set up the trigger with its name and then it's going to remove the hint icon and then it's going to get to here and go okay well we're just going to wait here in this code until this triggers active and it won't move on into the function until it has been activated and because of that now this will work in the way that we wanted it to and that's pretty much it in the coming tutorials we'll go into how you can make it play sounds deduct points from players and also make it into something where they have to purchase something maybe play effects this that and the other but for now we're just going to compile it and i'll go show you this in game so here we have a platform here we have another platform. This one should start spinning and this one will start moving. Okay, so let's go up to it and we're gonna press F on here. Boom, this one starts spinning and it'll do one full rotation and stop. And then this platform will start moving as well. And into the zombies we go. So yeah guys, that's all we got time for today in this tutorial. I hope this has helped you guys out. Don't forget to smash a like if you like this and write a comment if you have anything to ask me. Other than that, take it easy guys, stay freezy and I'll catch you on the next one. Right, see ya.